it's going to be in this battle with Ferrari? Yeah, first of all, I think after the great first half of the season that we had, it was important now to have these two weeks off for the entire team so everyone could relax, recharge the batteries and, and reset. Uh, but now, obviously, we're looking forward to the second half of the season. Uh, we know we have a, a strong car, we have two strong drivers and a strong team. But we know as well that we are up against a very strong uh, Ferrari team. So we need to make sure we just focus on ourselves. We need to make sure we pull off the, the race weekends in a similar way to what we did in the first half of the season and then I think we have everything in our hands in order to keep this, this bad lap up to the last race of the season. Lando has been one of the performers of the year but it, it's fair to say Daniel certainly in the, in the sort of reflections of some in, in the paddock hasn't quite hit the level that many would uh, have expected. I was talking to him yesterday and he said he's got 200 Grand Prix under his belt. He, he knows what to do to get himself out of the rut but how much help can you, can the team be in taking him to the place that he needs to be rather than where he's been at for the last yeah. few races? Well, the uh, most important thing is to understand that we're in this uh, together. And I'm very happy with how Daniel and the team are approaching the challenge we are in at the moment. It's not a secret that Daniel is not fully comfortable yet, as you said, with our car. But at the same time, he's putting in a lot of energy to make steps on his side. Also on the team side, we put in a lot of energy in order to help him. Uh, in order to, let's say, also try to adapt the car to his likings, in order to, yeah, uh, enable him to perform at the level that we uh, all used to from from Daniel. And I simply think we still need a bit more time. At the same time, I like really how the team is approaching it, uh, the attitude of, of Daniel also in this challenge. And I'm looking forward to the next 200 races with Daniel. <laughs> um, the move to the new car in in 2022. Lando himself uh, has said that, like Daniel, he finds this particular car very specific. It requires a very unique way of driving. And I know the regulations have changed massively for next year, but will there be any carryover? Can you, can you ward out this peculiarity, the individuality, to make it uh, something that is m more likable by the driver? Yeah, obviously very difficult to judge because it's a completely new car next year. At the same time, I think uh, certain development directions or ways of developing a car is always carry over from year to year, uh, independent of the specific technical regulations. So that's something we have to, to see how that um, plays out next year. Uh, we're obviously aware of the challenges both drivers are reporting with our car. At the same time, we don't know if other drivers and other teams experience with these type of cars exactly the same challenges. Uh, but I think we know we have what we have to do in order to help the drivers as well um, to extract these, these peak lap times. That's what we're working on together with both drivers. And uh, yeah, it will be very interesting how that plays out next year. Is there commonality between the two drivers in terms of what they like, what they don't like? Perhaps something that they absolutely do not want on next year's car? Uh, I wouldn't say not something that they absolutely do not like, but if you listen to the comments of both drivers, I think they comment on the same challenges they have with our car which is good, and that's what we're working on. Uh, finally, sustainability, the wider picture within this sport. How key is it for Formula One, but also for McLaren to be at the forefront of, of the push towards sustainability? I think it's, it's absolutely important. Sustainability is one of the key strategic pillars we have at McLaren Racing, which includes uh, um, an environmental um, sustainability, but at the same time, the topics of uh, diversity, inclusion and equality very important topics for us because we clearly see also the responsibility we have as an F1 team being part of the platform of Formula One in order to hopefully make our contribution in order to make the, the world a better place. But at the same time, uh, we're also absolutely convinced and committed that if we get these topics right and if we, uh, let's say, put high priority on these topics, that it simply helps us to become a better team.